Hey, how you doing? Justin here. In this lesson today, we're checking out a kind of folk finger style version of the Australian classic Waltzing Matilda. Now, hopefully you've been doing your homework and you understand the chord scale relationships between the major and minor chords in the key of C and the way they relate with the C major scale. Now, if you really want to do this properly, a really great thing to do would be to see if you can figure out how to play Waltzing Matilda just without any help or anything. Well, I can tell you that it starts on E. So if you can start with that and see if you can figure out Okay, if you can start to find that little melody there within the C major scale, that would be a really good starting point if you want to get into making up your own chord melodies. The next thing to do would be to try and play that along with some chords. Now, um, very often if you've got a chord book or whatever, you can see the melody and the chords together. Um, in this case, before you start even trying to do the, the folk finger style version, what I'd recommend is trying to play it just with the basic chords and, you know, just one strum or whatever, going like... That's a C chord, G, A minor, F. With the thumb over F, you could do do a bar chord version, C, C, G, G, C, G, A minor, F, C, I've put a D minor here, you can use all sorts of different chords on this one, D minor sounds a little funny but I want, you'll see the reason why later on I want you to do this one, D minor, G, C. So I think that's a really important kind of step, if you like, is to get, get used to the relationship between the chords and the scales before we start going. Because now we're introducing all of these other notes and the moving bass line, the thumb, gets a little bit more complicated. And with all of these things, if you learn them kind of step by step, it makes it easier. So definitely the first thing that I would recommend that you, you have a go at is just really just... See if you can figure that out. I told you the chords, you should know the melody or be familiar enough with the melody to pick it out. So um, even for you non-Aussies, you know. So uh, have a go at doing that. I'm going to go now to a close-up and show you the kind of the fingering that we need for the to play exactly the, the version with the alternate uh, bass part and all of that now. Um, but you might really want to pause and, and have a go at working out that basic chord melody yourself first. Uh, at least that's what I'd recommend. If not, uh, let's get to a close-up and uh, check out how to do it. Okay, so we're starting off here with a C chord. To a G. Very simple. A minor. It's really about what notes are being picked here. Just a little finger going down there to play the third fret on the second string. Now, as I said, there's a few different options here. You can either do a full bar chord F, and then to get the open B string, you have to kind of lift your first finger up so it's not doing a proper bar anymore. Or you can do it this way if you're doing thumb over playing the bass note with fingers one, two, and three. Doesn't really matter which one you do, the bar chord's probably easier. I probably personally would choose to do it this way just because I like the thumb over thing. But anyway, back to C. Staying on C. G. Now we've got here. And then. Just the C major scale. C, D. So we're just using our little finger and our first finger there. Back to C, G, A minor. Now 
Now the reason I'm so keen on you doing this little D minor like this uh, is so that we get used to moving our thumb over onto the fourth string. Um, but if you want to play that same melody, you can actually stay on C, sounds nice. Doesn't really matter, but D minor sounds cool as well. G. So just. Okay, let me. It's very simple here. The fretting hand for this one. It's very easy. It's really the the fun. Really is in the uh, in the picking hand. Let me just play it once through, nice and slow. So the fun begins now. What we've got to do is make sure that we can play the melody with our fingers and keep the alternate bass thing going on with the thumb. So I'm just going to take it through one bar at a time so you can see the different patterns involved. First one. Third finger is just playing the thinner string on the beat each time. Next one. So we've got here the second finger playing the melody together, separately. So together, between. Very simple. Now with the A minor, it's all still with the beat each time. We've got second finger, second finger, third finger, second. really be thumb and first, then thumb and second, second, thumb, thumb. I keep wanting to use my second finger there, I shouldn't. So you shouldn't learn my bad habit, I don't know why, where that's come from. Anyway, on to the next chord, we're on C. Together, thumb, first, Bass, second, bass, third, bass. Then staying on C. Together, bass, third finger, bass, third finger, bass. That was the sixth bar. Now we're changing to a G chord. bars of that, so together, bass, together, separate, bass. That one's a bit funny. Together, with the bass each time. You can see it's just whatever string is played on, we're using the right finger. C. So again, same pattern as we've had before. G. A minor, just like we did before. F. See, I'm using my second finger twice, so you shouldn't do that. You should use first and then your second finger. I don't know why. Just a bad habit it looks like I've gotten myself into, so don't follow me. Um, here. We had that already. Then the D minor. So that's why what I want you to get used to is now thumb has to move over here. So we're using our second finger to play on the thinner string and thumb is playing the fourth string and the third string. Then we're moving back to kind of regular position. C. OK, 
go. Play it once through for you very slowly. I really hope you enjoy playing Waltzing Matilda. It's a great song to develop later on as you develop new skills and you learn about incorporating hammer-ons and flick-offs and reharmonizing chord substitution, all that sort of stuff. You can start putting all of that into this song. Uh, the Tommy Emmanuel version is a really beautiful uh, and very complex uh, arrangement of it that you might want to check out to get some ideas. Uh, but for now, what you really want to be doing is doing it really slowly, making sure that you get a really good even, consistent bass line, that that's really consistent and the timing of it is solid, and being able to play that melody. And maybe something to think about is bringing the melody out. Try and, if you think about making the melody and the bass separate, often it develops its own kind of separation without having to concentrate too much on playing the melody note louder or using palm mute to get the bass line kind of sounding different or whatever. So just kind of think about separating the, the, the melody and the bass in your own ear. If it, that's kind of a bit more advanced, but that's the kind of thing that you want to be thinking about with this tune. Um, hope you have a lot of fun with that. Uh, next up, we're going to be checking out some more complicated uh, picking patterns. So um, hopefully you'll join me for that, and I'll see you very soon. Take care. Bye-bye.